All right, so this next artist that I'm going to be introducing tonight is Sixth Worshipper. You will be absolutely delighted. And um, she's a singer songwriter who wants to spread the message of hope to the law and love to the lost, brokenhearted. She's a keyboardist and backup singer for the urban folk band Welcome Home. And if, if my desire comes true, she'll sing the Little Birdie song. <laughs> it's not called the Little Birdie song. <laughs> It's called um, Just Be, but it's a very Disney-esque song. So if you can imagine if a Disney princess were to get radically saved, that's this young lady right here. Now she has some grit and some jazz and some other stuff in her too, so I don't wanna downplay any of that. It's, she's a vessel that's used by the Lord, and every time she opens her mouth, just you're gonna be inspired with the singing that comes out, the words that she's gonna speak from her heart, from God's heart to ours. Let's just give a big welcome to Ashley and Nicole from Los Angeles, California.
Amen. Now, to be honest, I get that a lot of times it's easier said than done. It's easy to say, hey, believe God, God, God has got you. It's all going to be okay. But it's not always easy to feel that in the moment. And that's okay because we're human and God knows that about us. And I've always taken encouragement from um, the Psalms of David, because in those Psalms, he's not afraid to express his frustrations and his complaints and agony before the Lord. But what always struck me was at the end of his Psalms, he would always conclude with an expression of trust in the Lord. Yet I will trust you. God, I'm feeling all these things and all these emotions, but after I've let that all out, I'm still going to choose to trust you. So, this is also another original called I Trust You. It's easy to say, and it's easy to read. God only has good plans for me, but I, I just don't feel that way tonight. Will you tell me how?
one of uh, my favorite examples of just in the Gospels or in the scriptures of um, trusting in the Lord and not knowing really what's going on is the book of Job. And if you've ever read that book, um, you know that most of it is made up of Job just expressing his um, complaints and his anxiety and just questions for God because he goes through all of these really difficult situations. Um, he loses his property, he loses his, his family, his kids, and eventually his wife and his health. And he doesn't understand why. He thinks, like, I've been faithful to God all this time. Why is this happening to me? And then Job's friends also speak up, but they don't offer the greatest advice either. And before his wife dies, she says, obviously God's not in your life. Curse God and die. Like, what's left? And what's amazing is because Job has no idea what's going on behind the scenes. And as we, as readers of the book, we get to see how... In heaven, there's this vindication happening between Satan and God, where Satan, ever the great accuser, says that Job's faithfulness is conditional. It's based upon God's favor in Job's life. And so Satan says, take away your favor from Job's life. He's not going to praise you anymore. He's not going to worship you. And that's a great accusation that goes against the very sovereignty of, of God and what he's about. And so God allows Satan to afflict Job's life to prove that Job's faithfulness is more than conditional. It's grounded on the goodness of, of who God is. Um, but Job doesn't know that. He doesn't know that that's what's happening. Um, and in the end, even through all his questioning, Job never forsakes God. And so God is proved true because Job's faithfulness is grounded on more than what he has. And God blesses him a hundred times over. He gets everything restored to him. And what I love is that God doesn't speak until the very end of the book. And I think it's like the last two or three chapters of just God kind of putting God, uh, Job in his place. And it's like, who are you, O oh man, to talk back to God? Like, where were you when I formed the foundations of the earth? Like, you can't even fathom what's going on. And that's always been a powerful reminder to me when... I'm going through hard times and I don't know why, there's more going on that we don't see. And so in those circumstances, we do need to trust God. And I know that I want my, my faith to be grounded on more than what I have. Um, so this, this song I is... Make a note of this? Yeah. I hate to interrupt such a holy moment, but this is, <laughs> but this is beautiful. And Job is an awesome book of the Bible. And my favorite part of the book of um, Job, at the end, God tells Job's friends, I want you to get on your knees in front of this Job and ask him to pray for you because <laughs> you're in trouble with me right now. Amen. I just have a, um, just like you said, there's things going on behind the scenes you don't know about. Right now, <laughs> there's, a, there's a room over there with food in it, and there's a long truck outside there selling sushi. The food over here is free, the sushi over there is paid, you know, it's a brother from the church, but anyway, I wanted to let you know, because I just went out there, there's no, no lion over there, there's nobody there. Now, don't all leave at the same time, because this is beautiful right here, but if you get hungry or anything, just, just know there's there's free food available out here, pizza, hot dogs, whatever, hot, I'll grab it, it's all out there, but find that other room, and a lunch truck out there selling sushi, right? And this is the real deal, right? Let's give a good hand for Ashley Nicole, keep going, keep going. I love sushi, so that's good to know. Yep. <laughs> this is called Where Were You? And it's by Ghost Ship, and it's based on the book of Job. I said, God, I do not understand this world. Everything is dying and broken. Why do I see nothing? I'm asking, could this be your plan? 
done it live once before, um, but it uh, was written just, my husband and I had been talking a lot about where we saw our lives in the near future and what we wanted, um, just what we wanted. And something that really came to us both was how we didn't want to be comfortable in our faith. And we've seen, we've seen that, you know, in, in people who can be comfy Christians or, you know, just kind of like coasting through life until, until they meet Jesus. But I, it's been on my heart a lot that I want to thrive. I want to, to more than just survive this world, but I want to thrive and live for Jesus. And I understand that that means embracing discomfort. Get it. So this is a piece of my heart being vulnerable with this song, but maybe you guys, maybe it will resonate with you too. This is called Uncomfortable. Thank you. Ready. 
one more for you tonight. And this is the one that Brad alluded to. A little groovy song. Where is he? <laughs> yeah, where is he? It's his favorite song. Um, well, maybe as he's coming back, I'm going to give you a shameless plug about the merchandise that I have um, on the back table back there. I have some CDs, had a CD player, of my first EP that I released in 2020. Um, there's some stickers and then a journal, uh, like a prayer devotional journal that a friend of mine uh, wrote, she helped me write. And um, it's based off of the songs off the EP, so you get to see a little bit of what inspired me to write those songs. Um, there's some scripture reading, some journaling questions. So, yeah, all that's back there. Cool. Um, there's some suggested donations, but please, if you don't have it and you want something anyways, please just take it. So I hope that is a blessing to you. Uh, so this last one is called Just Be, and it is based off Matthew 6, um, where Jesus encourages us to not worry. He says, look at the birds of the air, see how God feeds them. They don't worry about their food, they don't store anything. <laughs> and he says, look at the flowers of the field, they're so beautifully dressed, and they don't labor spin, they don't make their own beauty. So if God cares so much for birds and flowers, how much more does he care for us, mankind, created in his image? And so he says, therefore, I tell you, do not worry. For who of you by worrying can add a single hour to your life? And I love that phrase that Jesus says, because it's true. If you stress out about something, it doesn't make you live longer. So like logically, why stress out about it? Why worry? So this is called Just Be. It was a bright spring morning, no cloud in the sky. I looked out my window and the little bird caught my eye. And as he sat on the bridge of a tree, I could swear he spoke to me. And he said, hey girl, good morning, how do you do? The flowers are blooming and the sky is so blue. Thank you. 
That was amazing. And I heard that you guys did an encore. <laughs> Where were you? Yeah, she played the bird song, man. Yeah. The bird song is the best, isn't it? <laughs> hey, can we take, can we take like a, I know, can we do like a trailer before she can play and I sing? Sure. That's a fun. We turn it off. All right. Well, let's give another big round of applause for Ashley Cole. Wasn't that amazing? And we are about to have up our next artist, and she's going to transition, make sure that she's able to get them on stage, and then she'll come join me for an interview in a moment. Yay! So while we're doing that, I'm going to step over here. And our next um, artist is going to begin setting up, and I'll go ahead and introduce him. So Ashley, can you help them make sure that, that they're good, and then we'll come over here and interview you. Okay. I'm looking forward. Who's going to all right, so is everybody having a good time tonight? Yeah. Just letting you know that sushi truck out there, there's no one out there in line. They're waiting for customers. <laughs> All right, so this is our second concert in the last couple months here at Vermont Avenue Baptist Church. And we have other venues popping up. Uh, Pastor Phil Bernal's church is opening up for us to do a concert in February. And uh, Red, what's the date for February? February, the date of Bill Bruno Church. February 19th, we're going to have another live concert there, Lord willing. So, it's beautiful that even though that God has provided this avenue during the pandemic, that we also have the opportunity to uh, not only meet up online on Zoom, on Facebook Live, but we're actually able to do little concerts now. So, I'm extremely blessed about that. Red Seabrook. Can we just come, uh, did you, can you come over here just for a second so we can just say thank you to you? Oh my goodness. You have a camera off me, brother? Okay. <laughs> All right, so we're going to call just for a moment the, the founder of Red's Room, which is Red. And um, I got a little story for you about how that all came down, and he might be able to tell you a little bit more. But... Red has a man cave at his house. And in this man cave, he thought it would be fun and silly to put up a neon sign that says Red Room Entertainment. He had no, he had no uh, intention of starting something. But all of a sudden, this pandemic came down, and what happened? The Lord speak you. Tell me what happened at that point. You had to sign your room that says Red Room Entertainment. It was just more of a man cave prop. But then what happened from there? How did this become a reality? Uh, well, it's basically, I started off hanging out, trying to make it a, a fun thing for people to hang out and have fun, and the next thing you know, because of, I was a booking agent for a fishing cafe for 24 years, and I needed to, um, I just couldn't rest. So, so, I was, I, so I brought some of our artists from over there and brought them online and was able to start, start May of 2020, start to do the concerts. When Red says he couldn't rest, that's an understatement. Okay, Red literally has this um, this chat group that's on Zoom. It's called, and it's also on uh, Messenger. It's called the what, the Sleepless Club, the Sleepless Club. And for all those people, all, him and all his friends that have insomnia, or whatever, they just come and they hang out to the wee hours of night. What kind of things happen on that that club, brother? Oh, everything just fun. I just fun and work fellowship and crazy guys. We can goofiness, jokes, but also like prayer requests and pray for me and this and that, right? Awesome. Well, let's give a big hand to Red Sandbrook for starting something so that God's been using internationally now. And we're going to call up our artist now. Thank you, Red. Woo! <laughs> Ash, then Nicole. It, 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 first of all, let me shake your hand. It is a pleasure to actually meet you in person. I feel like I know you. Um, you know, not, not super well, but I mean, I, I admire I admire your singing, I admire your spirit, and you just have such a love for people, love such a love for God. Um, but, uh, you know, this is my first time actually getting to meet you, which is a, a pleasure, which is, it's an odd thing that we can meet somebody through a video venue long before I ever actually know them, which is really cool in this day and age. But, um, what, 
what got you into singing the kind of songs that you sing for the Lord? What got you into that? Well, it's definitely been a journey, because I did start songwriting when I was like eight, um, and then going through a lot of things in my like teenage years, early 20s, a lot of my songs were a bit more like somber, I guess, <laughs> and a little bit darker, and then um, I think it's just a, a transformation in my life and in my heart, and I was studying jazz music a little bit too at school, so I just... I remember one day thinking, like, I just I want to do more with this, and I want to like I want my songs to worship the Lord and not just be from my depressive or like agony settings. <laughs> and um, yeah, I can't really say how it happened. Cause I, I really think it was just the Spirit moving in me and moving my hands, and sometimes I still don't know what I'm doing, but <laughs> I really believe that it that God really is the one that's writing behind the scenes and sends us the vessel. Something special about making yourself available to the Lord. Amen. Um, just think about Jesus. Um, he would go and, you know, tap a text collector on the shoulder and say, Come call me. He would go tap to some fishermen. He, he, he doesn't go to the, you know, university level people with the matches and the, the, the doctors necessarily. I'm not, not, not putting down if you have a doctor, I have a matches. I mean, I, you know, but that doesn't qualify me for, for serving the Lord. But Paul fights is, is being a student of his word and being filled with the spirit, being filled with his love and whatever, which you more than qualify. <laughs> but um, yeah, it, it, it's a beautiful thing um, to serve the Lord, you know, and sing from my, know that from my own personal experience. But when you were a child, like eight years old, did you already know the Lord? I, I mean, I grew up in a Christian family, um, you know, went to church and to Sunday school, and I feel like I knew God, like, had that kind of, like, foundation, but I, I wouldn't say that I really started following the Lord for myself until I was a teenager. Um, I went to a church summer camp, and the theme was on First John, just walking in the light, and I was going through a lot of stuff during that time, but I felt like God was really telling me, like, Ashlyn, I have so much more planned for you if you would just follow me, like, walk away from this dark heart or this emo stage that you're in and just like walk in the light, walk with me and I decided then and there that I didn't want to just be like a Christian or like from a Christian home or like the Christian girl but I wanted to live for Jesus and I wanted to know what it meant to to be a follower of Jesus um, just like the disciples were and it's been a growing process obviously ever since then but yeah I would say I had a foundation as a kid um, but it wasn't until I was a bit older that I really made the decision myself. And I don't know why this analogy just came to my head, but you know how in a train you have an engine, and you have a bunch of cars, you have the boots, whatever, and it's like yeah. they have the engine, and they have the, your parents were the next car, and then you were hitched to them, and God has to just go, time to take them out of the way, so you hit, hitched directly to me. And I think in every person that grows up in a Christian home, you have to do that. You have to say, you know what? It's not me following my parents or following God. It's me having my own relationship, my own connection with God directly. And I heard someone say once that God has children and he doesn't have any grandchildren. <laughs> so, you know, you have to know the Lord definitely yourself. Um, now, I have a kind of a maybe random question to ask you, but since you did get to know the Lord through a camp, have you ever gone to give back and serve at a camp in any kind of way? Yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, that church summer camp ran for a couple years, and it was from the church that I was going to. And the next year, I went just as a camper. Um, but the next two years after that, I was a counselor, like like a counselor for some younger girls um, and a team captain for our teams and stuff. So that was pretty cool to be able to like see the younger girls, even though they weren't that much different in age from me, to still see my growth in where I've come in the last couple of years and be able to pour more into them because I could understand a bit better what they were going through at that age. Yeah, I know that personally in my life that I went to a couple um, Christian camps growing up and they were transformational, absolutely transformational. 
I've also served many, many years in, different, in, in a camp called Camp Valley Oaks Christian Camp where we serve it. And we see a lot of life, a lot of life change there. So any of you out there listening, if you have a solid walk of the Lord and, and God's knocking on your heart and go serve at a camp, I recommend it, right? Because it, it, it does change, just like she testifies, like it testifies, it changes lives. So um, now, what, what, are your, what are your goals right now, um, you know, with your music and with your ministry? I feel like kind of a word that I guess the Lord has given me since years is refresh. Um, I've had my hand in a lot of different music industry opportunities, which is pretty cool. But through it all, I really honestly just found the most satisfying thing has been like worship or ministry and serving. And so I feel like God, um, which has been preparing me for a very long time, <laughs> to just really step more into music ministry. And, you know, I, I've done music-related stuff that's not necessarily ministry, so it's more for me, and it's just empty. Like, you know, there's nothing, there's nothing ultimately fulfilling about that, and I found myself just really dissatisfied with that, and so ministry is hard work, and it is sacrifice, but I just feel like God has a lot of that in store for me this year. I don't completely know what it looks like, but I'm just trying to be faithful and say yes to the opportunities that he presents to me. Well, I can say definitively that while you are going through a season where you are going through a season of refreshment, that you are refreshing us. Your songs, your words, your smiles, and all of it, they, they, you're shining very brightly for Jesus. And I just encourage you to keep doing that and keep pressing into God. And, Let's all give another big round of applause to Ashley Nicole. Thank you, God bless you, sister.